kripa sindhu bai eva cha patitanam pavan ebyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadha shiva sade gaur bhakta vinda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So welcome everyone to our reading of Nectar of Devotion. We're on chapter 7 and we're reading about uh, evidence from revealed scriptures re regarding the different principles of devotion. So we're up to the item which is entitled Accepting Only What Is Necessary. Okay, so uh, it's described in the Naradiya Purana, one should not accept more than necessary if he's serious about discharging devotional service. Srila Prabhupada explains to us, he said, the purport is that one should not neglect following the principles of devotional service. And nor should one accept the ruling of devotional service that are more than what he can easily perform. For example, it may be said that one should chant the Hare Krishna mantra at least 100,000 times daily on his beats. Yeah, 100,000, that means 64 rounds. But if this is not possible, then one must minimize his chanting according to his own capacity. And then Srila Prabhupada explains, he said, generally we recommend that our disciples to chant at least 16 rounds on their japa beats daily. And this should be completed. Yes. But, but if one is not even able to chant 16 rounds, then he must make it up the next day. He must be sure to keep his vow. And if he does not strictly follow this, then he's sure to be negligent. In other words, that is offensive in the service of the Lord. And if we encourage offences, we shall not be able to make progress in devotional service. 
It is better if one fixes up a regulative principle according to his own ability. And then he should follow that vow without fail. That will make him advanced in spiritual life. So we should understand this carefully. We may think, well, I'm finding very difficult to chant 16 rounds. And so I'll just chant a few rounds. Let me just chant eight rounds or four rounds. So if you're only going to chant eight rounds or four rounds, then you cannot be initiated. Srila Prabhupada would only give initiation to people who promised to chant 16 rounds. One time, there were these young men in Hawaii, and they were uh, professional tennis coaches. So they'd been chanting Hare Krishna and they really liked it and they associated with the devotees and they heard the philosophy and they, they wanted to become devotees, they wanted to get initiation. So they told Prabhupada, they said, Swamiji, we would like to become your disciples, but we have a problem. We're not able to chant 16 rounds. And they said we're only able, I'm not, we're only able to chant twelve rounds. So can we get initiation? Because we're very busy all day. We do a lot of physical exercises, a lot of running to keep fit. So we don't have time to chant sixteen rounds, but we chant twelve rounds. So can we get initiation? <laughs> So Prabhupada said, no, first you chant 16 rounds, and then when you're chanting 16 rounds regularly, then you can get initiation. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people speak like this, you know, I've heard people say, oh, 16 rounds, it's too many rounds, we should just chant a few rounds. I, I, it, it, one man said to me, he said, if I just have to chant four rounds, he said, I could chant good rounds, but 16 rounds, no, they're not very good. So the problem is, if, if, if people were allowed to just chant four rounds, after some time they'll say, I should just, you know, if I have to chant four rounds, it's not very good, but if I just chant one round, I can chant very good. And then after time they'll say, why I should chant a whole round? I just chant one bead, I'll just chant the, the Maha Mantra one, and I'll chant very nicely. 
แต่แบบว่าทําไมเราต้องมานั่งทั้งปักคำด้วยนะฉันขอสวดฮาริกาชาแค่มวลหนึ่งแล้วกันแล้วก็เดี๋ยวฉันจะสวดอย่างดี So in this way, people will compromise, and they'll end up not doing any chanting. Actually, the instruction is that we should always chant the holy name. ตามที่แท้จริงแล้วเนี่ยคำสั่งคือเราเนี่ยควรที่จะสวดภาวนาพระนามอยู่เสมอ It is described in the Shikshastikam, Trinada p i s u n i c h e n a t a r o r a p i s a h i s h n u n a Amani n a m a n a d e n a Kirtaniya Sadahari. So Kirtaniya Sadahari means always chant the holy name. เหมือนกับที่พระองค์เจ้าเจตนาทรงได้กล่าวไว้ในสิทธาสตกรรมบอกว่าในข้อสุดท้ายเนี่ยจะบอกเกิตเนียสดาฮารีคือควรที่จะสวดภาวนาพระนามแก่อยู่เสมอ And Sri Lopra p a p a d spiritual master Om Vishnu Pad Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati p r a p a d he used to say if you're not chanting 64 rounds a day then you are patita you are fallen แล้วก็พระพระอาจารย์ของศิลปะฝ่ายเนี่ยบอกที่แสดงต่อสรสตีเนี่ยท่านจะกล่าวไว้ว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเธอเนี่ยไม่สวดวันละหกสี่รอบเนี่ยถือถือว่าเธอเนี่ยเป็นดวงวิญญาณผู้ตกต่ำ So of course when we know when Prabhupada came to the West the people in the West they found it difficult to chant 64 rounds จำได้ตอนเพราะว่าเนี่ยทรงไปที่ฝั่งเอ่อตะวันตกเนี่ยตอนที่นั่นเนี่ยคือ Uh, and they told Prabhupada, oh, it's too much. We can't do this, Prabhupada. It's too much. We can't chant so much. Actually, Hari Das Thakur was chanting every day, 192 rounds, which is 300,000 names. ทากูเนี่ยสวดวันละหนึ่งรอยเก้าสิบสองรอบซึ่งประมาณสามแสนพนัน So uh, the the standard was that the people everybody should chant one lakh names which is sixty sixty four rounds and and Bhakti Sadanta Sarasati's time that was the accepted standard that people would Chant 64 rounds. But when Prabhupada came to the Western countries, he saw the Western countries were was a different way of life from in India, and people were not much able to sit and concentrate on chanting the holy name. แต่พอไปที่ประเทศฝั่งตะวันตกแล้วเนี่ยวิธีชีวิตของผู้คนก็ต่างกันออกไปแล้วก็เอ่อก็สังเกตเห็นได้ว่าผู้คนไม่สามารถที่จะนั่งสมาธิได้เป็นระยะยาว So Prabhupada reduced the chanting first to 32 rounds and then finally to 16 rounds and he thought this is the minimum you must chant at least 16 rounds เสร็จแล้วก็ส่งอารมณ์มารวยให้แล้วก็บอกว่าโอเคอย่างน้อยเนี่ยคือหกรอบ And ideally you should try to chant more you should try to chant even as much as sixty four rounds in one day แล้วก็เราก็ควรที่จะพัฒนาตนเองให้แบบว่าได้เยอะขึ้นเรื่อยๆอย่างน้อยเราต้องทำให้ได้หกสิบสี่รอบต่อ But Prabhupada also said if You chant 16 rounds in the day and engage in Krishna's service the rest of the time. Then that is allowed. Just like many devotees, they have jobs. They go to a job. They're working all day, so they don't have a lot of time to chant. But if they chant for two hours in the morning, or so chant sixteen rounds, and then and working all day, then it's keep them in Krishna consciousness. 
แล้วถ้าเกิดว่าสําหรับเราที่แบบทํางานมีหน้าที่ความรับผิดชอบภายนอกอยู่เนี่ยก็สามารถที่จะสามารถที่จะสวดมนต์สิบกรอบเนี่ยสองชั่วโมงหลังจากนั้นก็ไปทํางาน So we don't want to minimize on chanting 16 rounds. Everyone should try to chant 16 rounds. And p r o p e s said, not very difficult. It takes about two hours. Some people chant slower, and some people would take three hours or maybe even four hours. But you have to chant 16 rounds. <laughs> ใช้ประมาณสองชั่วโมงหรือชั่วโมงครึ่งสามชั่วโมงก็แล้วแต่แต่ว่ารอบระยะเวลาอะไรยะที่ควรใช้เนี่ยคือสิบกรอบ And if you don't get sixteen rounds finished in the day, then you have to finish them the next day. ถ้าเกิดว่าสวดวันหนึ่งไม่เสร็จเนี่ยก็ต้องสวดอีกวันหนึ่งถัดไปวันถัด Or you can stay awake all night and chant till you get your rounds finished. And sometimes people also think that four regulated principles is too much. They say, "Oh, if we only have three principles, it will be much better." People think four principles are oh, very difficult. We will never get many devotees. It will be too difficult for people to become devotees. <laughs> But if we say three principles, it will be much easier for people to be devotees. Uh, เราทำเราลดไปเรื่อยๆเลยแค่สองข้อเนี่ยมันจะยิ่งมีคนมาเป็นสาวงได้เยอะขึ้น So the problem is that if you're only going to follow three principles, then that's not pure devotional service because you're engaging in sinful activities. ข้อหมายก็คือตราบใดที่เราเนี่ยยังถึงแม้เราบอกว่าสามข้อนถึงถ้าเรายังทำสามข้อง้นสิ่งข้อหนึ่งเราไม่รักษานั้นก็หมายความว่ามันจะไม่เป็นการอุทิศตนแต่รับใช้บริสุทธิ์เพราะเรายังยังทำบาปอยู่ We want pure devotees. We don't want people engaging in sinful activities. เราต้องการสาวผู้บริสุทธิ์เราไม่ต้องการผู้คนที่ยังทำมียังแบบอยู่ในเอ่อ So sixteen rounds and four principles are necessary, and that's the minimum standard. All right. And then next next item is observing fasting on a k a d a s i รายการต่อไปก็คือการถือศีลอดในวันเอกฤทธิ์ Okay, so as described in the Brahma v i b h a r t a Purana, one who observes fasting on a k a d a s i gets free from all kinds of sinful reactions and advances in pious life. บอกว่าการถือศีลอดในวันเอกฤทธิ์ใน The basic principle is not just to fast, but to increase one's faith and love for Govinda or Krishna. หลักพื้นฐานไม่ใช่เพียงแค่อดอาหารแต่ให้เพิ่มพูนความศรัทธาและความรักต่อโกวินดาหรือคริสนา The real reason for fasting on a k a d a s i is to minimize the demands of the body. เหตุผลที่แท้จริงในการถือศีลอดในวันเอกฤทธิ์คือเพื่อลดความต้องการของร่างกายให้เหลือน้อยลง And by fasting on Ekadasi, we we have more time to do more service for Krishna, like chanting the holy name. Right. 
So the best thing to do on fasting days is to remember the pastimes of Govinda and to hear his holy name constantly. So in about uh, about uh, 12 days from now, I think it's about 12 days from now, we'll have the next Ekadasi. And that ekadasi is actually Pandava Nirjal ekadasi. So some devotees, they take that vow on the Pandava Nirjal ekadasi, they will not eat or drink that day. Uh, it's not compulsory, however. If you like to do it, if you're in good health and you have the, uh, the time and the ability, then you can observe the fasting. There are different ways of observing ekadasi. Some people will not eat at all on ekadasi. And some people, some people may only drink some water on ekadasi. And some people may only eat fruits on a courtesy. And other people, they may eat uh, things like vegetables and potatoes, and but they won't eat any grains and they won't eat any beans. So that is that is the usual standard in Iskon that we should not eat any grains or beans on the Ekarasi day. You you can cook, but don't cook grains. Do not, don't cook any rice and don't cook any wheat or corn or soya. Don't cook any of these things on a currency. And don't cook any beans also, which means also dal. Don't cook any dal. Uh, yeah, yeah, some but you can take Ikadasi Prasadam. Ikadasi Prasadam can be also very nice and very tasty. You can, some, some devotees are very expert in preparing Ikadasi Prasadam using things like uh, uh, Sabodana, you know. Tapioca. And there's also sima rice, a courtesy rice you can use on a courtesy. Mm. There's so many things, fruits and vegetables you can the, the, the real purpose of the Ekadasi is to reduce our eating and to have more time for the service of Krishna. When I joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement, 
Or we were, at, at that time, you know, all the devotees would stay together in the temple and we would observe Ikarasi on, on, on the, and we would all, we would not take any breakfast that day on the Ikarasi day. And we would take a good lunch. There would be a very nice feast for lunch. And so you can, you, and we would all try to chant 25 rounds that day. Prabhupada had actually given that amount of rounds. He said, on a courtesy day, do more chanting, try to chant 25 rounds. And try to do more hearing and chanting. So there's a famous pastime which took place in the times of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. It, it happened that it was an Ikarasi day and the members, the devotees in the temple, they were all decided to fast that day on Ikarasi. And at that day they got an invitation to come for a program. So when the invitation for the program came, the devotees said, Oh, we're fasting, we can't come today, we're all fasting. But when Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati heard, he said, Then cook prasadam and everyone take prasadam and go for the program. แล้วสาธิเนี่ยพอได้รับคําเชิญเนี่ยเขาก็บอกเขาก็ตอบไปว่าอ๋อวันนี้เราไปกันไม่ได้หรอกสาวทุกคนเนี่ยถือศีลอ
So the, the, when the devotees realized there were beans in the sabji, they were all very shocked. And the, one senior sannyasi was there. He went to tell Prabhupada that Prabhupada, we've all broken the courtesy. We ate beans today. And it's a courtesy. By mistake, the cook put beans in the sabji. And Prabhupada was very upset. And Prabhupada said, you all have to fast for three days. However, after some time, Prabhupada changed it. He said, tomorrow you must all observe the courtesy again. So that's what we had to do. We all had to observe the courtesy the next day. So try to understand, it's very important. You should always know when it's a courtesy. You should have a Vaishnava calendar. And that way then we can know when is the courtesy and we should know the time for breaking the fast also. All right, the next item is offering respect to the banyan trees. So it said in the Skanda Purana that a devotee should offer water to the Tausi plant and Amalaka trees. He should also offer respect to the cows and to the Brahmanas and he should serve the Vaishnavas by offering them respectful obeisances and meditating upon them. All of these processes will help the devotee to reduce the reactions of past sinful activities. So we encourage devotees to keep Tosi plants if you, in your own home, if you can. Tosi is very auspicious and to keep a Tosi plant in your home is very, very auspicious. But you must you must keep her carefully. You don't want just just like because Tosi is a pure devotee. So a pure devotee comes to your home, you have to take care nicely. You have to have sunlight for Tosi, and she should not be in the draft. And we should, every day we have to offer our respects to Tosi, bowing down and then pouring some water, little water on her. So, respecting Tosi is one thing, but then we're also told we should also respect the cows. Of course, not many people have cows, but if you're fortunate, if you do see cows, we should respect them. 
แล้วก็เราก็ควรที่จะแสดงความเคารพต่อวัวด้วยเมื่อเราวัวเนี่ยเราก็ควรที่จะแสดงความเคารพ And then we're also told we should respect also the brahmanas and the vaishnavas. And we respect them by offering obeisances to them. We can offer obeisances either uh, mentally or. Uh, verbally or physically. In other words, in our mind, we can respect the, the brahmanas and the vaishnavas. We should, we should be very pleased to see them. Yeah, if you meet the devotees, if you meet a brahmana and devotee, don't go, oh no, here comes a devotee, oh, don't be, you know, don't try to avoid the devotees, rather we should think we're very fortunate, it's a blessing to meet the devotees. Mm. So respect. So we respect them. Either we can respect in our mind, or we can, with verbally, we can say, "Please accept my obeisances." We can simply speak like that, speak in a respectful manner to them. And if it allows, if in the place, you know, if you're in a, a suitable place, you can even bow down to them and offer respectful obeisances, dandavats. In some places nowadays, they have the habit, they will say, Oh, Dandabhats pronouns, but <laughs> they say Dandabhats pronouns, but nobody ever bows down. Dandabhats means to fall like a stick, but no one ever does that. When I need it, I will have to Dandabhats pronouns. But at least we should try to show respect and uh, pleasure to meet with the devotees and the brahmanas. Alright, the next item is giving up the company of non-devotees. This is a, an important item because this is mentioned by Lord Chaitanya and it's also mentioned by Rupa Goswami. So we'll, let's read how it's described here. Lord Chaitanya was asked once by one of his householder devotees, what is the general behavior of a Vaishnava? What should be the general behavior of a Vaishnava? So in this connection, Lord Chaitanya replied, that a Vaishnava should always give up the company of non-devotees. And then he explained that there are two kinds of non-devotees. 
So one kind of non-devotee is against the supremacy of Krishna. And the other kind of non-devotee, they're just too materialistic. So Prabhupada says, in other words, those who are after material enjoyment and those who are against the supremacy of Lord Krishna are called Avaishnava. Avaishnava means not devotees, non-devotees. And their company should be strictly avoided. So this pastime is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Lord Chaitanya was living in Jagannath Puri and devotees would come from Mayapur and from other villages around Mayapur, they would all go to Jagannath Puri to be there for Rathiyatra. And then they would stay there for four months because the Chaturmasya would begin, the four months of austerity. So they would stay in Jagannath Puri for four months. And so it happened while Lord Chaitanya was there in Puri and the devotees were all there from Mayapur. There was one householder devotee, he went to see Lord Chaitanya. And he told Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, you know, I'm a householder, I'm in family life, so it's very difficult for me to make spiritual advancement. I'm very fallen, how can I make advancement? I get very attached to my family and my wealth and these things, so how can I make advancement? So Lord Chaitanya told him, he said, you should chant the holy name and you should serve the Vaishnava. So then the householder asked Lord Chaitanya, he said, how do, how do I, how do I know who is a Vaishnava? How to recognize a Vaishnava? Uh, can mute you. Can you mute yourself? Thank you. So Lord Chaitanya described the Vaishnava. He said a Vaishnava is one who gives up the association of non-devotees. Asat Sangha Vaishnava. Uh, Asat Sangha Vaishnava. Tri Sangha Eka Sadhu Krishna Bhakti Ara. Uh, it's described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that a Vaishnava is described as a person who gives up the association of the material. <laughs> Asat Sangatyag Evaishnav Achar 
Vaishnav Achar means the behavior of a Vaishnava is Asat Sangatyag. They give up the association of the material. And then he says, Trisanga Ekasadu Krishna Bhakti Ara. Mm, right? That he's careful about associating with the opposite sex. And he is also careful to avoid the association of people who are not devotees. Because people who are not devotees, they don't chant the holy name, they don't want to hear the name of Krishna, they don't like to hear about Krishna. So, uh, Lord Chaitanya described like that, that uh, the, the, as Prabhupada describes here, the two kinds of non-devotees. Some are just envious of Krishna. And uh, other kind, they're just very materialistic. <laughs> Means they're very attached to money <laughs> and sense gratification. Mm. All right. So then we're going to go on to hear more about giving up the company of non-devotees. There's some references from the scripture. This is from the Katyayana Samhita. So there it's stated that even if one is forced to live in a cage of iron or in the midst of a blazing fire, he should accept this position rather than live with non-devotees who are against the supremacy of Krishna. Wow. เอ่อว่าหากถูกบังคับให้อยู่ในกรงขังเหล็กหรืออยู่ท่ามกลางเปลวเพลิงที่เผาโชคช่วงเราควรที่จะยอมรับสถานภาพเช่นนี้ดี
ordinary people won't even worship demigods. Ordinary people, they just, they will get their wealth, they will fulfill their desires, they will beg, borrow or steal. But here you see uh, demigod people people worshiping demigods. They 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 want to. They're recognizing the demigods as having some power in the universe. So it's it's at least they're on the Vedic path. When they worship demigods, they're on the Vedic path. People who don't worship demigods, they're not even on the Vedic path. So it's better to embrace an alligator or a snake or a tiger than to be with people worshipping demigods. So Prabhupada writes, in the scriptures it's instructed that one may worship a certain demigod if he desires to get some material gain. For example, one may want to worship the sun god to get rid of a disease. And somebody wants to have a beautiful wife, they should worship Uma, who is the wife of Lord Shiva. And that will help them to get a beautiful wife. And somebody wants to improve their education, they should worship Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. And there's a list of many different demigods who can fill all different de de material desires as given in the Srimad Bhagavatam. But all of these worshippers, although they appear to be very good devotees of the demigods, are still considered to be non-devotees. People worshipping the demigods cannot be accepted as devotees. But sometimes if they get good association, you can maybe if they're willing to hear and take instruction, they can become devotees. We often find they get very attached to particular demigods. However, we should understand that the demigods are not supreme. And they cannot satisfy our desires in the, without the permission of the Supreme Lord Krishna. Just like there was a great pundit, his name was Keshava Kashmiri, and he was a great devotee of Mother Saraswati. Like, 
He was a great devotee of Mother Saraswati. And he was traveling around everywhere and challenging people to debates. So he came to Navadweep because 500 years ago, Navadweep was one of the important centers of learning. Five hundred years ago, many young men would all come to Navadweep to get education and to study. So at that time, Lord Chaitanya was known as Nimai Pandit, and he had a, a school and he was teaching people. So although, although he was a young man, he'd opened his own school and he had many students. And he was teaching Nyaya, he was teaching logic. Many teach also grammar as well. So Lord Chaitanya was there one day, and when this Keshava Kashmiri came, he saw Lord Chaitanya sitting with all of his students and he was teaching them. And Keshava Kashmiri came and he was with all of his followers and he was riding on an elephant and there were many people following him because he was very famous. So he had a big entourage of people with him. So, so when he saw Lord Chaitanya, or we say Nimai Pandit, when he saw Nimai Pandit, then Keshava Kashmiri began to speak to him and, and, and said, oh, oh, I hear you have a school, I hear you're a teacher. And, But Nimai Pandit was very humble. He said, yes, so he said, I'm just a new teacher. You're a, a great pundit. You're a great personality. He said, I'm nothing compared to you. And then Nimai Pandit asked him, can you compose some poetry in glorification of Mother Ganges? They were right, the, they were right at the side of Mother Ganges, so it was appropriate to offer some nice prayers glorifying Mother Ganga. So Keshava Kashmiri composed many, many verses glorifying Mother Ganges. But Lord Chaitanya told him, he said, you, oh, you've made some mistakes. So he said, You've made some mistakes, and Keshava Kashmiri was. He, he said, "No," he said, "I didn't make it. I'm, my poetry is perfect. There's no fault in my poetry." But Lord Chaitanya said, "No, there is. There are mistakes." เขาบอกโอ้ฉันพูดผิดไม่ได้หรอกมันไม่มีความผิดพลาดใน 
And Lord Chaitanya quoted the verse, he quoted one verse, and he said, you, this verse has several mistakes in it. So Keshava Kashmiri was very surprised that Lord Chaitanya could remember even one of the verses. But Nimai Pandit said, well, he said, the, you have the ability to compose poetry, I have the ability to remember poetry. And then Lord Chaitanya asked him, he said, tell me about the faults. What, do you see the faults in this verse? There's some good things in the verse, but there are some faults in the verse. And Keshava Kashmiri got upset and said, no, there's no fault. My poetry is perfect. And Lord Chaitanya then explained all the faults in the poetry. And the, but he explained also the good things about the poetry, the good the good points and but also the bad points. And so Keshava Kashmiri was shocked that he'd been defeated by this young man, this young boy, a teenage boy, Nimai Pandit. So that night he prayed to Mother Sat Saraswati. Have I done some offense to you? And Mother Saraswati spoke to Keshava Kashmiri and told him that that young man who defeated you he is my Lord and Master, and you should go and surrender to him. So Keshava Kashmiri came and surrendered the next morning to Nimai Pandit. So in this way, you can see, demigods are all servants of the Supreme Lord. All right, are there any questions today? ไม่มีคําถามมั้ยคะวันนี้เยสเอ่อผมใช้อ่ะ <laughs> Her question is, if we want to do the uh, service to Mother Cow and we are living in Thailand, so can we go to some Thai temple, they have a cow farm. So can we go and give food to the cows over there and can we give the donation sometime? They ask for the donation that uh, we, they can rescue the cow that they're going to kill. Should, can, uh, uh, should we give donation for, for people to do that? Well, this, this is material. This is not spiritual. Right, this is a material thing. 
material charity. You give the donation, you don't know what they're going to do with the money. They may say they're going to do this with your money, you don't know. It's a risk. You want to serve the cows? You can go and uh, brush the cows and clean them. Get a nice brush and a bucket of nice like, warm water and you can use it to brush the cows and clean the cows. And the cows will be very happy if you keep them nice and clean. If, if I buy some um like cow food to, to feed them, um, how possible Kulmaras is okay or not? Yes. Okay. Thank you for your advice. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. You will be Sati Madhavi. Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, and dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances for Guru Shila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, how are uh, our pious activity and uh, understanding of Vaishnava's philosophy related? Uh, so, um, if we are not pious, uh, we cannot understand uh, Vaishnava's philosophy. Is that true? Yes. Um, Yes, it's true. If you're not pious, then it will be diff more difficult to understand the philosophy. But you can become pious by hearing the philosophy. You have to hear it more. You have to hear it again and again. And gradually you'll become pious enough to understand it. So you shouldn't think, oh, I should give up. I'm not pious, so I won't try to understand the philosophy. In the Srimad Bhagavatam it says, if you can't understand the philosophy, you should serve the devotees. And by serving the devotees, you'll become pious and they will bless you and you'll be able to understand. So you have to get the blessings of the devotees and then you will understand the philosophy. Understand? Yes, Guru Maharaj. And um, is it a criticism in our mind if we are not pious? And uh, then uh, we cannot understand. I don't understand this. What are you saying? Uh, uh, if, um, for example, uh, is it a criticism in our mind? if we are not pious. And uh, then, uh, you know, for that reason, we uh, cannot understand a philosophy. Like, like we would the criticism kind of yes. mentality yes, yes. will come from? Yes. Oh. Yes. If we are not, yes. Yes, if you're not pious, then you'll become more critical. You'll, it'll be easy for, you'll be critical of other devotees. So you have to be very careful not to become critical of devotees. That's very offensive. Yeah. Yeah. 
คือถ้าไม่ไม่มีบุญมากความมีแต่ความบาปเนี่ยมันก็จะทําให้เราแบบชอบมองเห็นความผิดพลาดของเสาหรือดาว่าเสาอันนี้งั้นเป็นคุณสมบัติที่ไม่ดี Don't criticize the devotees. See our own faults. Don't see faults in others. See our own faults. And ya wa konan ya da konan. Hai du kwan phit pla kong tuwe. Nei chai kwan phit pla kong tuwe. Okay. Yes, thank you very much for your explanation, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. My doubt is whether we can use the soya, some other sauces they use for cooking, fried rice. One devotee asked me on other days, is it ideal or it's better to avoid? Yes, it's not very good, really, for temple in the temple. You know, for offering to the deities, it's not very good to use soy sauce. It's not the best thing. Hmm. แต่ยังก็ทำเรื่องการใช้ soy sauce ว่าแบบว่ามันดีไหมซอสซีอิ๊วขาวอะไรอย่างเงี้ยถ้าเกิดใช้ในวัดเนี่ยมีพระปฏิมาก็ไม่ไม่สมควรมากขนาดนั้น Yes, good soya, soya is not very good for the deities, actually. It's not very first class. It's, it's common, people use, use it a lot, but it's not very good. And, you know, it's, it's not food which is usually offered in the temple to the deities. ไม่ใช่ถือว่าเป็นระดับอาหารที่จะใช้ในที่วัดเพื่อถวายให้พระปฏิมาเอสกุลวาราชเนี่ย some people also tell avoid this vegetable this is not good we don't have to follow that much right กุลวาราชเราสามารถที่จะ avoid some some vegetables Which vegetables? I don't know. Yeah. There, there are some vegetables, the things like leeks, you know, leeks and of course and onion, garlic, these things. Yeah, Mush yeah, mushroom we avoid, I know, yeah, usually. Mushrooms also, not yeah. but mushroom is a fungus. Mm. Mm. Yeah, these are not the best things for in, in deity worship. Yes, in your okay. home, in your home, like in in parts of like the, in Asia, it's more common people use these things, especially soya and especially mushrooms. And, you know, these things are kind of standard among Asian people. Yeah. China, yes, Japan, these places like that. They're more. They use these things more. You know. Yeah. But it's, it's not really Vedic. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj, got it, yeah. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, one more doubt uh, regarding the point. One should not accept more than necessary if he is serious about discharging devotional service. Uh, yeah, so is it, uh, uh, after that we discussed about the chanting, but I was thinking, uh, is it about the things? Maybe we have too many saris or too many things in our house. Yes, that's also true. They, uh, we accumulate more than what we actually need. You should be careful. Try to keep your home simple. Keep it basic. Don't over collect. <laughs> Don't have more. <laughs> you know, like, especially ladies, you know, Ladies' clothes, sometimes they have many clothes and shoes and yeah. so many things they have. Mm. So be careful, yeah, try, try to keep, you know, minimum. Yeah, so much time is wasted in the cleaning of the house, Umar, and so many things. Yes. Yeah. Right. 
So we, yeah. do, we, do, we have to be careful. Over collecting, that's described in the, in the Upadesha, in the Upadesha Amrita, our nectar of instruction, it mentions there about over collecting. So that's it's definitely not good for Krishna consciousness. Try not to yeah. over collect. You know, we get things, sometimes it's good give things away, you know, that rather than keep so many things, just get get in the habit of giving things away so you don't collect too many things. Yeah, yes, good Maharaj. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yes, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So I think that's it, is it Archana? Yes, Lunash, that's it. So we'll stop here. Thank you very much for translation. Thank all the devotees for their participation. Have a good evening. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gorbaita Vrinda Ki Jai.